Welcome to Classic Value Investors and Microcap Explosions. This is Marius Skoniecny. This is a video in the video series called How Did Stupidity Work Out? Today I'm going to be briefly talking about Theranos. Uh, if you didn't hear about this scandal or this company, it's a, um, it's a um, consumer technology comp startup that was started by this lady that you see on your screen, Elizabeth Holmes. And this uh, this was in 2003. She was 19 years old, uh, Stanford chemical uh, at electrical engineering dropout. And she started this company to revolutionize blood testing industry. So just listen to this interview with Jim Kramer to get a better idea of what this company was about. We're out here in San Francisco to speak because we want to dive right into the heartland of American innovation. And that often means going off the tape to talk to game-changing, privately held companies that are leading the way in their particular industries. Which brings me to Theranos, a revolutionary diagnostics company that empowers individuals to take better control of their own bodies while at the same time upending the existing paradigm that's costly, inefficient, and painful for the client. Namely you. This is a revolutionary company that threatens to change healthcare the same way that Amazon changed retail, or Intel and Microsoft changed computing, or Apple, yes, changed the cell phone. It could be that huge. And you might be checking it out yourself at a Walgreens near you, as the gigantic worldwide drugstore chain has adopted Theranos' solutions. Could this be the future of preventive medicine? Let's take a closer look with Elizabeth Holmes. She's the founder and CEO of Theranos, who also happens to be the youngest self-made female billionaire in America. Ms. Holmes, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. All right, Elizabeth, you're doing something that's so profound that I, you're giving transparency. You're also making it so that it's easier, better for the consumer. Uh, there's a little device that you have that I think is the good metaphor to start with. Could you show us and tell us what it is? Absolutely. So this is what we call the nanotainer, okay. which is a very small tube that's designed to replace the big vials that you take out of your arm when you draw blood traditionally with a tiny drop that can come from a finger. Okay, so what does this mean for the traditional way we do diagnosis, and how would it upend the paradigm? Because I know you don't want to think small. The goal is to empower the individual. We believe strongly that the future of healthcare is in enabling the individual to have the information that they need to take ownership of their health. And making lab information, which drives 80% of clinical decisions, more accessible by making it as painless as possible making it incredibly inexpensive and providing transparency around pricing so that people know before they buy a healthcare service how much it's going to cost them, we can begin to make it possible to enfranchise the individual and get them engaged. Now this is not some pie in the sky. First we got a great board of directors, we all know that, but Walgreens, Walgreens yes. Boots, that's yep. the largest. They have decided that your way is the way to go. So as you can hear the excitement in Jim Cramer's uh, voice. This was a company that, you know, as I said, was started in 2003. And then by 2014, um, it was valued at close to $10 billion. So it didn't really have any clients. It didn't have approved or tested product. It was all hype. Uh, she did a really good job with um, surrounding herself with a really good board of directors. Um, they were all, uh, what was common about all of them, that mo the people that on the board of directors, they were very respected in their industries, but they knew nothing about healthcare or technology or this particular technology. But she surrounded herself with them to gain uh, credibility. And as a result of this, everybody was saying, well, if these people are involved in a company like this, then it must be good. And even Walgreens uh, came in and didn't want to miss out. And Walgreens actually sent out a um, someone to investigate uh, Theranos before making a decision and then that person told Walgreens there's something wrong about it uh, something doesn't add up and even Walgreens uh, uh, ignored the advice and just went ahead and invested over 100 million dollars uh, so 
and but because Walgreens got involved uh, this also gave more credibility so this was an example of nobody was doing any due diligence everybody thought that the next person was doing the due diligence and they just uh, went in and it was a private company it, di it didn't make it to uh, to the public market yet but still it was valued at 10 billion dollars and people like Robert Murdoch uh, Betsy Devos who was the US Secretary of Education James Baker and even Walton family the owners of Walmart they invested millions and millions of dollars Robert Murdoch lost 125 million uh, the US Secretary of Education lost 100 million and the Walton family uh, lost 150 million and this is an example of you know crazy crazy stupidity because uh, they privately valued this company at 10 billion dollars and because Elizabeth uh, Holmes owned 50 percent of the stock she she was worth like four four to five billion dollars and you know how uh, the the financial media uh, automatically embraced it. A healthcare pioneer is being compared to visionaries like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. This morning, Elizabeth Holmes is part of the new Time 100 list just out. Her mission is to allow blood testing in every drugstore at a fraction of Medicare costs. Her innovation has fueled anticipation in the healthcare industry and made Holmes the world's youngest female self made billionaire. At 19 years old, Elizabeth Holmes dropped out of Stanford. She had a little tuition money and a big idea. Now at 31, she's what lots of teenagers with that so background likely ready. strive to so become. The youngest billionaire in the world. Mm -hmm. Is that heady when you hear that? You know, it's, it's not what matters. Um, what matters is how well we do in trying to make people's lives better. I mean, that's, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I work the way that I work. And, that's why I love what I'm doing so much. Uh, college dropout. College dropout was the requirement because Bill Gates, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, uh, Steve Jobs, they were all dropouts and they were all young. So this was an absolute requirement that a 19-year-old uh, Elizabeth Holmes had to have been a dropout. And that means that, you know, she was too smart for school and... You know, this was all music to the ears of everybody else. And at the end of the day, the product uh, didn't work, uh, didn't have any uh, revenues, and everything collapsed, and she went from being a billionaire to being worth zero. And now, if another requirement for this scheme to work was that people involved in it had to be clueless about the product, biology, and, and technology, because the people that knew about this they weren't involved people that knew anything so that's an another absolute requirement that these people have to be involved in something that they don't know anything about and it has to have a wording of revolutionizing some revolutionizing something in this case it was supposed to revolutionize blood testing industry and you know these were the the key words to make such a thing uh, you know a bubble and a successful um, successful uh, hype and overvalued uh, company and now if you uh, read my book uh, the scuttlebutt you know that if you did anybody who did a little bit of the work that I'm talking about scuttlebutt which is uh, calling some of the employees uh, former employees suppliers and uh, customers it, it would have been quickly very quickly uh, exposed that this thing has no bone that was all pipe dream and people wouldn't wouldn't have lost all this money but you know on wall street most of the people don't want to do the work they want somebody else to do the work and they want to get involved in things that they don't understand uh, as long as they are supposed to revolutionize and be world changing and disruptive and things like this um, you know they're happy to get involved so now let's take a look at what Elizabeth has to say now that the shit hit the fan Elizabeth a lot of young women looked up to you especially in tech what would you have to say to those young women do you have any comment at all to the investors that say they lost millions of dollars because of you? I do. 
don't be an idiot do your work do your do your due diligence don't listen to people that don't have your best interest in mind and use your head just because something is revolutionary disruptive world-changing doesn't mean it's a good investment